Okay, in this video, we are gonna to continue to do a ton of series multiple choice questions. Get ready for the BC calculus exam. This is actually part six, parts one through five exist. There's gonna be eight parts. I'm pretty sure they will all exist when I upload. Um, let's get going. So the integral test can be used to determine which of the following statements about the infinite series, uh, n goes from one to infinity, e to the one over n over n squared is true. So we basically have to do the integral test on this. So it must be the case that the series is positive, continuous, and decreasing from one to infinity. We don't have to show that because they're telling us to use the integral test. If there was like an E, an option E that was like the integral test doesn't apply, that would be so annoying. Um, so let's do this. So I have to set up the integral on a free response question. The notation is crazy important. You have to do this limit thing. You cannot use the fundamental theorem if one of the bounds is infinite. So instead we just kind of like fudge our way through it and say like, uh, oh no, we'll just make the upper bound b. So we're doing the limit as b goes to infinity of one to b, one over x squared, e to the one over x. I'm gonna let u equal, so you can either let u equal e to the one over x and like do the whole thing, or you can let u equal one over x. Either way, you're gonna get negative e to the one over x, and then from one to b, and then we like plug in. Then we take the limit as b approaches infinity, um, and we get negative one plus E. So kind of skip some stuff there. I have some videos on improper integrals and just like, you have to be really good at U substitutions, but there we go, negative one plus E. So this converges, so the series converges, um, and the answer is A. New problem. The nth term test can be used to determine the divergence for what, no, the, uh, what am I reading? The nth term test can be used to determine divergence for which of the following series. All right. N term test. We got to do limits to infinity. And when we do them, uh, we need to not get zero or I don't know what we're doing. Divergence. Yeah. So take the limit. And if we get the limit, then it can't, I don't know. Here we go. Let me just do it. If I go to infinity here, um, the nat I get the natural log of one. The natural log of one is zero. That means the N term test doesn't tell us anything. So it does not tell us that the series diverges. There we go, that's a no. I had a lot of trouble uh, articulating that. For option two, take the limit as k approaches infinity, uh, k over two k plus one, that's gonna be one half, which is not a zero, which means by the n term test, this diverges. So I've mentioned this in several of the videos. I'm ignoring the negative one to the k because if the limit of the absolute value is not zero, then uh, that means that the alternating limit will also not be zero. If the limit of the absolute value is zero, then the alternating limit will also be zero because zero times anything is zero. So this is a yes because the limit was not zero. So that's gonna be a yes. And then for the third one, we're doing the limit as k approaches infinity of this thing. That's gonna, you can ignore the k squareds or you can use L'Hopital's a couple of times. Either way, you're gonna get negative one fifth Negative one fifth, you might notice, is not zero. And so the n term test does tell us this diverges. So which one does it tell us diverges? It's two and three. Took me a while to understand how to say that question, but that's what we're doing. All right, 48 of 71, we're getting there. If a sub n equals cosine of pi over n for n equals one, two, et cetera, for n greater than or equal to one, you might say, um, which of the following statements about the sum from one to infinity of a sub n must be true? All right, so I'm gonna take the limit because uh, all of these are about the limit. <laughs> um, so the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine of pi over n is gonna be the cosine of zero, right? Because pi over n definitely goes to zero. And the cosine of zero is one, which is not zero, which means this thing diverges by the nth term test um, and then the answer to that would be D because that's the one that says um, the series diverges and the limit is not zero. It's kind of interesting the way they frame that because like if the limit is not zero, the series diverges. C, is, C cannot be true no matter what, right? A series can't converge with the limit of the n term not being zero. All right, 49. Which of the following series diverge? This is it. I hate questions that ask about divergence because I just want to answer questions about convergence. I understand that those are essentially the same question. It's just the way I feel about it. All right, we're taking limits. So, um, I mean, like, you might need to do other things, but this feels like taking limits will do it for us. So, 
For the first one, uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine of 2n just doesn't exist. It never, it, like picture the graph of cosine. The graph of cosine never settles down. It doesn't actually have a limit. So that does not exist. Does not exist is not equal to zero. And that means that this diverges. So one diverges, and that's what we're looking for. Option two. Uh, again, I'm just going to take limits on these. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n is just 1, and that is not 0. So this also diverges. And then 3 is, I don't know why, like I find 3 almost offensive <laughs> because the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n squared is infinity. There is no chance that that could converge. So that also diverges. All of them diverge. So the answer is D. So that's that. I mean, uh, it could have been that these were, you know, geometric where R is greater than one. They could have been P series where P is less than one. All of these, however, diverge by the nth term test. All right, number 50. If the sum from one to infinity of A sub n is equal to five and A sub n is greater than zero for all n, which of the following must be true? All right, so we're going to look at each of these because that's like the only way to really um, answer this. Um, if a series converges, so the first one is limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is zero. If a series converges, then the limit of the n term must be zero. If the limit of the n term is zero, it doesn't mean that a series converges, right? It's like, I don't know, all, all horses have four legs, but not all four-legged things are horses or whatever, right? So since this series does converge to five, like that's the sum of the series, it must be the case that the limit of the nth term is zero. So uh, this is definitely the answer. Um, so I chose to write the opposite because that's basically the nth term test, right? If the limit is not zero, then the series would diverge. We know the series converges, so therefore the limit must be zero. Um, so that's that. Uh, let's look at the other ones just to like see what they're trying to fool us with. Uh, the limit is n approaches infinity of a sub n is 5. That's definitely not true because if the limit of, well, first of all, that contradicts, you know, 1 or a. Um, but if the limit of the n term was 5, eventually you'd just be doing plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. There's no way that converges. Um, C is kind of like confusing the ratio test, right? So if we do that limit and we get 0, uh, that doesn't need to be true. We just need to do that limit and get less than 1. We don't necessarily need to get 0. So we need that to be less than one by the ratio test, not equal to zero. Um, and then the same that for D, it's like the same idea. Um, if you do the ratio test and you get exactly one, then the ratio test is inconclusive. It, there are convergent series for which the ratio test is inconclusive. So that couldn't have been the answer either. All right, so that was just looking at wrong answers. We were done with that question like a minute ago. All right, 51. If the ratio test is applied to see this like a theme here, we're just looking at like, what does the ratio test say? If the ratio test is applied to the series from zero to infinity, n pi to the two n over 17 to the n, which of the following inequalities results implying the series converge? Well, they're all less than one, so they all imply that. All right, so let's do the ratio test. Let's set it up. So we do the n plus first term. So that's n plus one pi to the 2n plus 2, it's 2 times the quantity n plus 1, that's where 2n plus 2 comes from, 17 to the n plus 1, times the reciprocal of the nth term, so 17 to the n over n times pi to the 2n. Uh, there's some cancellation that you can do here, right? 17 to the n cancels with 17 to the n, leaving you with just 17. Uh, pi to the 2n cancels with pi to the 2n, leaving you with just pi squared, and then... Uh, you have to look at the answer choices, see what they've chosen to do. They leave the n plus 1 in the n. So this will become the limit as n approaches infinity, n plus 1 pi squared over 17n. And then for convergence, we would need that to be less than 1. So our answer is whichever one matches that. I think it's C. Um, yeah, because of the pi squared. Okay, so a uh, good problem. Just asking us, you know, if you applied it, what would happen? All right, let's look at this. What are all positive values of p for which the series, the sum from 1 to infinity, n to the p over 4 to the n will converge? n to the p over 4 to the n. This, um, I mean, this is probably a ratio test problem, I guess, uh, because every question that we're doing right now is a ratio test problem, but that's no way to think about the AP exam because that's not going to happen. So we have to, like, think this through. So if I hadn't been in the middle of doing a million ratio test problems, I would just think like, I don't know, 
exponentials just crush polynomials to infinity. So like, I think this is probably gonna converge no matter what I make P equal to. So like my answer would be, so positive values would be, like my answer would probably be any value of P, um, but since it's positive, I would say P is greater than zero is gonna make this converge. Um, I think that any P greater than zero will make it converge. Um, so I would pick that answer. It turn if you do the ratio test on this, you're always gonna get one fourth for any positive value of p. Like you can try it out. Just pick a value, right? Like so. For example, here we could just pick a value that is greater than four because look at the answer choices. P is greater than zero. P is between zero and four only, but I'm pretty sure it does converge. So like let p equal one, for example, you get n over four to the n. That definitely converges. But you could also use a ratio test. P greater than one. So if I just choose like P equals 10 or five or whatever and try to do this, if we get convergence, then with P equals five, that'll make A be true. It'll make B be not true. It'll make C be true. Um, and uh, it'll make D be false. Uh, but five is greater than zero and greater than one. Oh no, then I need to do a number like one fifth or something. I don't know, just it, use the ratio test. I'm confident that this converges. That's like how I approach the problem. Using the ratio test with any value of P is definitely going to work out for you. Um, so I think the answer is definitely A. I don't think I did a great job of explaining that one, but you can't win them all. All right, 53. If A sub N is greater than zero for all N and the limit is N approach infinity of A sub N plus one over A sub N is equal to three. Which of the following series converge? Okay, so we know the limit is n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n is three. So now what we need to do is just look at what would happen, right? So uh, option A, we already know that limit is three. That's not less than one. So A diverges for sure, right? Because that's like if you just had that. So now you start thinking, okay, well, what about the other options? Well, if I take a sub n and divide it by n to the fifth and then apply the ratio test, like all that I'm really adding into the ratio test there in my mind is I'm adding in uh, like a sub n plus one over n plus one to the fifth and then times n to the fifth over a sub n. And then the n to the fifth over n plus one to the fifth just gives me a ratio of one. So I'm back at three. I'm going to get three again if I do this. Um, so I still get three, which is still greater than one. That diverges. But then C is the exact, well, not the exact opposite. I'm going to end up with five to the n plus one times one over five to the n plus one times five, which gives me one fifth. So it changes the ratio in the ratio test to give me uh, three fifths. So overall, the series now has a limit that's less than one. So this converges. This is the answer. And then uh, by the same logic, D is going to end up giving me uh, 9 over 5 when I take the limit. So you can do the test. You don't really have to. But because I think I'm doing a bad job of explaining this, I'm going to do the test for part C. So I'm going to say it's the limit as n approaches infinity, a sub n plus 1, 5 to the n plus 1 times 5 to the n over a sub n, right? And then we know the limit of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is 3. And then the 5 to the n, 5 to the n plus 1, just give us 1 fifth. So we get 1 fifth, and then times 3 is 3 fifths. You can go back and do that for b and for d. I don't think you need to. I think you can work it out in your mind, but I wanted to do that because, again, I said, I don't think I did a great job of explaining it. Um, so we could have done the work for all of them. I think that C is kind of clearly the answer. And also it's, it's useful to remember at all times using the ratio test on a P series is always inconclusive because it always gives one. So like in B, we basically multiplied in a P series, which the ratio test will just give us one for anyway. Um, so that's another thing to consider here. All right, let's look at one more, I think. Yes. If a sub n is equal to 1 for all positive integers, what is the value of s sub n, the nth partial sum of the series, from 1 to infinity of a sub n? Well, this is a famous summation. This is definitely equal to n.
But if you haven't run into it, haven't thought about it in a while, the only reason I ever think about it is Riemann sums, turning Riemann sums into definite integrals and then taking limits. We do that quite a bit in some of my classes. Um, so I think about this summation a lot. If you've never thought about it or you haven't thought about it in a while, just like do a couple. So here, for example, S sub one would be the sum from one to one, which is just add up one once, that gives you one. And then S sub two would be the sum from one to two, which is one plus one, which is two. And then five would be one plus one plus one plus one plus one, which is five. Every time you're just getting that upper bound, so it's just N. Um, all right, so I'm gonna end this video here. I will be back in the next part uh, to do more of these. You can find the previous parts in a playlist, I'm sure, and then the future parts probably also in the playlist. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.